All right. Um, well, I'm real sweet. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share my story and uh, give you guys some behind the scenes of the Shark Tank. I want to thank uh, Rich for having me. Um, it's been an amazing ride. And uh, first, I want to start off by asking as far as this, this is my group right here, startup uh, in, in entrepreneurs. And um, as far as products, how many ever had an idea for an invention or a product by a show of hands? Okay, I want you to lock your elbow, don't be bashful. Lock your elbow and look around. Okay, now I'm gonna ask how many have ever had an idea for an invention and you, two, two years later, a year later, you see that same invention or product on the store shelves. All right, now all the hands go up as far as that. Okay, well, this wasn't the first invention idea I, I've had. You know, I've, I've had others, uh, but I never took any action on it. And it was the inspiration of my grandfather that, uh, that gave me some action. He said, uh, Chris, what is the richest land in the world? And I said, the United States. And he said, no. And I said, China. And he said, no. And I said, Grandpa, I give up. What is the richest land in the world? And he said, the graveyard. Because that's where so many great ideas, that's where so many people died with great ideas in them that they never got out. And so I said, you know what, no matter how small, no matter how big the idea, I'm going to get it out. I'm going to make it happen. And uh, the first idea I had, and I'm going to show you how this has turned into something even bigger than I could ever imagine. How many are familiar with these? Ramen noodles, okay, college staple, right? The annual consumption of these packs is 95 billion worldwide, 95 billion packs. But on the back of the instructions, surprisingly, uh, there's no microwaving instructions requiring you to uh, make it on the stove. And so when I was at uh, UC Davis, you know, I survived on these things daily. And I got tired of pulling out the pot and the pan and the bowl and the water. That's cooking. I wanted a quick meal. So I always made it in the microwave, but I never got that stovetop taste. And one time, I was making it in the microwave, and I must have put the right amount of water, and, and I said, and it, they taste pretty good. And I said, there is a way to actually make perfect stovetop quality noodles in the microwave. But I said, you know what? This has to be simple enough to create. So I'm going to create this thing. And uh, I'll say more at a time of the lessons learned, but uh, I used a professor out of Chico State, helped me uh, develop the product. So the students at Chico State were the uh, first that created the prototype. And uh, after a lot of uh, hard work, we created the rapid ramen cooker, okay? And this is how it works. All you do is put the block of ramen right, block of ramen right in, the, uh, in the cooker. You add water to the water line. You pop it in the microwave. Take it out with the two heat resistant handles. And it makes perfect ramen noodles every time. Hey, let's clap it up for that. Hey! <laughs> right? So I created this product. Well, I have another company uh, called the Johnson Group. This year will be at 10 years. It's a technical recruiting company. And so uh, we place architects and engineers. And so I, run, I, I won an award with Senator uh, Pro Tem Daryl Steinberg. And uh, after the award, they had uh, entrepreneurs get together. And, and um, I, you know, I was creating this thing on the side, but I never really told much anyone about it. And so something said, you know what, bring the rapid ramen cooker to you with the, to this luncheon. And they expected me to talk about the Johnson Group. And I pulled out the rapid ramen cooker. I told them about it. And, uh, and I was a little shy about that, because I'm going from a professional company to noodles, right? So I said, but I had the courage. So I brought it out. And, this, and then one of the guys says, you know what? I know a store manager at Walmart. You should contact Walmart. Uh, and I said, he said, would you like a connection? I said, absolutely. So he set a meeting. I didn't know that the local stores of Walmart can actually have purchasing decisions. It started with uh, produce. And so set a meeting to go to meet uh, with the store manager at Walmart. I'm standing there in front of the cash registers, waiting on the meet, waiting for the guy. He forgets about the meeting. I'm there 20 minutes. He finally waves me back. And so I fall, fall on big 6'4 guy. I, I, he, he sit, we sit down in a small office, and I, and I tell him about the rapid ramen cooker. He's stone-faced. He stands up, says, follow me. So I follow him. He takes me in the ramen aisle, picks up a pack of ramen, says, follow me. I follow him. We go to the break room. He hands me the ramen noodles and says, show me. 
right? So here's my moment of truth. Okay, this is Walmart, the biggest company, the biggest retailer in the country. But I've done this hundreds of times, it works. So I put the block of ramen in there, add the water to the water line, pop it in the ramen, I mean, pop it in the microwave, it's in the microwave, and I'm trying to engage in some small talk with him. He's not engaged. <laughs> so I take it out, ding, I take it out, and they're not done. And I'm freaking out. Not on the outside, but on the inside, I'm freaking out. And I, I said, you know, let me give it one more minute. I put it back in there, another minute. I take them out. They're still not done. But I could see that they were done at the bottom. I look at the uh, microwave, it was only like 400 watts. But he, I, he started to stir it, and he said, oh, I get the idea. I put the seasoning in. He takes a bite, and he goes, this is a winner. He said, we sell pallets and pallets of ramen noodles. I'll be your first customer. And, uh, and I was like, you know, thank you. You know, just really composed. And uh, he's, 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 as we're walking out, he says, make sure you pay for these on your way out. I said, all right, no problem, no, no problem. So I get to the car, I close my door, I look around, and I'm going crazy. I got Walmart, my first customer, the audacity. And so at this point, I didn't even have a bank account yet, right? So I go to Chase. And I'm sitting there, and I'm filling out the, with the banker. And he goes, what is the rapid ramen? And I'm telling him about it. He's like, man, that's so cool. Why didn't I think of that? What, that was perfect in college. And he goes, you know, I know a reporter at KCRA who loves to cover you know, Sacramento stories. And, and I, I, I would love to actually uh, connect you. Connects me with Leticia Ordaz. I contact, she loves the story. We convinced Walmart to allow us to film it in the Walmart store. It was a great story, great coverage. And so I had my website up. And uh, when, the, when it aired locally in uh, the Sacramento area, you know, I was getting all these uh, comments. And I'm reading them to my wife. My wife's in the back there. I was reading them to my wife. And one was like, man, you're going to be a millionaire. You know, college kids around the country need this. And I was getting all these great, why didn't I think of that? And I'm like, just getting fired up. And you know, we're, just, we're just smiling and we're laughing. And then I get this one. And it's amazing how one negative, of course it was an uh, anonymous, how one negative comment just silenced everything that we had going on. And this, this comment, it said, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my life. This is not an invention. Walmart is stupid for putting it in their store. KCRA is stupid for covering it. And you're stupid for inventing it. You will not make a dime on this. You go ahead and give up while you're ahead. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a pretty confident guy, but that rocked me. I mean, it rocked me to my core. And that was the, one of the first lessons that I've learned is the difference between faith and fear. See, both faith and fear, they're polar opposites. They can't be any, any more opposite, faith and fear. But they share one characteristic that's the same. There's one characteristic that they both share that's the same. And that characteristic is they both want you to believe something that hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet, the fear hasn't happened yet, of, man, I'm going to blow this thing up. This business that I created, it's going to make millions. I'm going to be able to bless my family. I'm going to be able to meet my dreams, right? That's, that's the faith. The faith is saying, I'm going to get it. I'm just going to be successful. The fear is like, what are we doing? I'm going to be the laughing stock in my community. Noodles, man, seriously? Right? Like, man, you, yes, you, there's this, you, think, you feel like we can scale this, but this other business you had, what about the time you're going to spend with your family? Right? The fear is like, this, you're going to be a failure. So both are speaking to you. So in any journey, as you're starting up a company, you're going to face faith and fear. So I said, you know what? I choose faith. I got my mind right. I prayed myself up. I was ready to go for the next day. Next day, the store manager at Walmart calls me. And he's like, dude, and I could tell that it was bad. I pulled over. I was driving. I said, pulled over. And he said, man, he was like, I thought with the footage with uh, KCRA that we'd be blowing these things out. He said, we probably sold three. I'm sorry, man. This thing's not going to work. 
And I'm like, hey, man, listen, you got to believe. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, all right, man. And so it's like, man, anybody experienced that? <laughs> Where you're trying to fight and it continue adversity. And so I said, you know what? I'm choosing faith. I'm going after this thing. I'm still going to make this thing happen. Um, three days later, with no help of my own, my, my, uh, my phone, I set my, um, my website every time we get an order to send me a notification. And we were getting order after order, and it was like 10 orders a minute. And it continued to go throughout the day. I was like, what is going on? So I had to Google myself. And so I Googled it. The KCRA footage went viral, went on the front page of AOL. It was like 386,000 views in six hours. And we were selling the tune of 10 orders a minute. I mean, we were just, and so my wife, stand up, baby, stand up. I've been with my wife since I was 14 years old. <laughs> she nice and she fine. You, know, you typically don't get those combinations. You know, yeah, I had to embarrass her. So my wife, she was fulfillment. So what she would do is she would put all the, you know, the uh, cookers in the sleeves. She'd pack them in big, giant bags. And it was, during, it was in November. It was during Christmas time. And so her job was that. My job was, OK, it, it might be illegal now. But uh, <laughs> so our online was set up, right? But I didn't have the merchant service to collect the uh, credit cards. So I would set it up to collect the credit cards, but I had Square. So I had to manually input 3,000 credit cards by hand. <laughs> so when, when I come to find out, that's illegal. You can't just capture the credit cards. 3,000 credit cards by hand. And so when I tell you I didn't sleep, literally, I did not sleep. My job was processing the credit card. Her job was fulfillment. And I was hard on her, because I wanted them to go out on time. <laughs> so after that, things just started to, to have just success. Uh, Walmart blew out of those units. It was just one store. But I used that success to get more success. So I drove here in the Bay Area. I went to Pleasanton. And I met with Safeway. And I said, we're in Walmart. So I told them about the product. We're in Walmart. I didn't say one Walmart. I said, we're in Walmart. He said, well, great. This is cool. We'll put you in all 1,200 Safeways. It's like, thank you, right? <laughs> right? Then, then I went to Winco, and so I, had all, I started to get this success. And I've always wanted to go in uh, Shark Tank. Um, I'm new to the Twitter thing. There's my Twitter handle. If, it's kind of like text messaging everybody, so I've got, I'm getting used to it. All right, so here's Shark Tank. Now. Now, oh, this is how much time I got left. Perfect. So here's Shark Tank. So real, I want to give you some brief stuff, because I want to get to some more good stuff. Um, first of all, Shark Tank's real deal. There's, it's, some people, is it, is, it, uh, is it scripted? No, it's unscripted. The first time I walk out to the sharks is, the first time I see the sharks is when I first walk out. And so I walk out to the sharks, and I stand on the X. You say, stand on the X, and you have to stand there for uh, about 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Now, they say it's for lighting and all that stuff. Absolutely not. It's pure intimidation. <laughs> and so there's I'm standing on the X, and that's the only face I, I knew how to make. Just be friendly. <laughs> not, not too much teeth, but just friendly, right? And I was surprised about how close the sharks were. They were from, right, from me to my man right here in the blazer. And I was like, man, they're so close. And I'm watching each one deal with the process. Mark, you know, this whole, this whole uh, intimidation process, Mark's too big for the process. So Mark's just, you know, he's doing one of these. Barbara, she's smiling at me. Everything's OK, baby. You know, she's giving me some, And so I just focused on Barbara. I just focused on Barbara. And then I pitched my heart out. And so how many have, our, have saw my segment? OK, yeah, so a lot of you. Uh, YouTube it. Uh, it's out of three, three out of the five sharks that uh, made offers, and I went, I went with uh, Mark Cuban. And uh, so that's me doing the deal with Mark Cuban. However, some other behind the scenes for you guys. After you do the deal on air, there's a due diligence process. Okay? Both parties get to do due diligence, primarily the entrepreneur, if they, you know, as far as doing the deal and the, the agreements uh, look, uh, are, are well. Well, fortunate for me. My, um, my, my uh, episode aired in the middle of due diligence. 
So when it aired, we did a quarter of a million dollars online the night of the show. I didn't know, it was, I, when, before when I used to look at the Super Bowl commercials, like, they're spending all that money. I get it now, okay? I get it now. So now, we don't need the cash, but I still want to do the deal because I want the mentorship. But I could see, Mark has 82, awesome guy. He has 82, he had 82 at the time companies that he does, that, and he has a whole management team that manages those. And so I saw that I wouldn't get the mentorship. And that's, that was really important for me. So, we part, we didn't, so I didn't do the deal. Uh, we still parted on great, uh, on great terms, uh, but I was able to get the exposure without having to give a piece of, what, of my company away. Uh, success at a glance. You know, started with $2,500 investment. Now, um, Rapid Ramen, well, Rapid Brands is the fastest growing uh, microwave cookware in the country. We'll do 100 million this year, which is just absolutely insane, okay? Uh, fastest microwave company in the, uh, in the, in the U.S., best-selling microwave accessory on Amazon.com, 4.5 uh, stars. We have 15 inventions now. Now it's up to 21. This is a little old. Uh, in over 50,000 retails nationwide, re recently secured license deals with Disney. So we now have the Disney, you know, Marvel. Anybody going to see uh, Civil War, right? Licensing moves the needle. So now we got Disney, and, that, and then, we, then we just locked up Nickelodeon. But remember, I wasn't going to make a dime on this. Remember, that was clear. I wasn't going to make a dime on this. Next slide. Exposure everywhere. Good morning, America. I've been on there three times. It's just uh, incredible. All the, all the biggest retailers in the country. New products. Now, you guys got a peek? Now it's gone. All right. <laughs> So, but I'll give you one new product. We got 10 new products. We got a rapid oatmeal cooker, a uh, rice cooker, um, and this one is really cold. Oh my God, it's cold. Uh, anybody like brownies? Well, currently it takes 30 minutes to make brownies in the oven. And our rapid brownie baker, <laughs> you can make perfect brownies in three minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> hey! <laughs> right? So it's, uh, it, it'll debut on Walmart, Target, Walgreens, all over. And guess what? Walmart's going to be selling it for $3.97. You think we're going to sell a lot of those? I think we will. So 10 lessons along the journey, because I want to leave some time for questions. One is have a conquest. Some of us are not setting bold enough goals, not praying boldly, not acting boldly. So when you set out your, your, uh, your projections of what you want to accomplish, don't have a goal, have a conquest. So this, is what our, this was our conquest, okay? This was about a year ago, filming some feedback. You okay on audio? This is the target shelf. And so you see a two rapid ramen cookers. There's our second product, the rapid mac cooker. Makes mac and cheese in less than five minutes. Awesome product. And this is our competitor. They own the shelf. So we own about 10%, they own 80%. So what I created is when we had our new product, when they were still in prototypes, I said, give me full production packaging. I want full production packaging. I took off everything off the shelf, and I put all of our products. And I, and I had them take a panorama of it. And then we placed it all over the office. I said, this is our conquest. It's the takeover. We're taking over the shelf. That's how bold we want it to be. And I got to tell you, I didn't know, I knew it was going to happen. I've already accepted it that in my mind it was going to happen, but I didn't know it was going to happen this fast. We went from 10% of the shelf to now we have over 70% of the shelf in Walmart and Target. Identify your dream. Now, this is really important. Everybody knows this is the startup grind, man. It's grind. You got to go get it. So if you're going to go get it and you're going to put in those hours, you got to identify why. This life you have, you have one, you have one life. You gotta, you, you, it's, not a, it's not a practice run. So you need to have a self-retreat with yourself and say, what do I want out of this life that I have? List it down. Like, what do I want? You know, some, there's two categories. Some people don't go after what they want, or some of us, we've reached a level of success. And we haven't said any new things that we want, but we still got a lot of life left. So I'm going to give you my, my th th just, a, just a sneak peek of my, this stares at me on my desk every single day. 
And I'm running out of time, but I just want to tell you about one. I mean, Disney Cruise. That was awesome. I, I, I wanted to go on a Disney Cruise with my family. They love the Disney Cruise. Now, listen, don't feel bad about your dreams. They're yours. Do the things that make you happy, not the things that make other people happy or will appear to make you happy. Get the things that you want. We love the freaking Disney Cruise, OK? My wife cried when we had to get off that boat, right? So that's on my dream board. My son is one of the top six, uh, 12-year-old uh, basketball players in the country. Yeah, it's ostentatious to have a, a basketball hoop in your house, but I want it. I don't care what you want. This is what I want in my life, right? So, uh, you know, as far as supporting charity and putting my kids through college, these are things I want. So you got to put, it should be personal to your DNA. The course I see, so I was like, man, when I used to, when I used to, I'm a big time basketball player, and I, I didn't go to a Kings game until I was an adult. And I would look, be in the Kings game, sitting in the nosebleeds, and I would watch the game, but I'd be distracted. I'd look at the lower bowl, and I'd say, wow, they look so happy. <laughs> then I got some success, and I was able to buy season tickets in the lower bowl. And I would watch the game, and then I'd get distracted, and I'd look at the court side, and I'd go, wow, they look so happy. <laughs> and now we're at a point where I was able to get those court side seats. Four, uh, four levels of faith. I'm running out of time. Four levels of faith. Now, there's four levels of faith. The first one is I think, okay? This is I think I'm going to succeed. I think I'm going to be a millionaire. I think I'm going to have, uh, I think I'm going to have success. This is the lowest level of faith, okay? It's the lowest level, okay? The next one is I believe, I believe it's a little better, and that's where a lot of people stop. I believe we're going to do 50 million this year. I believe we're going to make our first million this year. I believe we're going to get up to 25 employees this year. I believe. If I were to tell my, my wife, when she's my girlfriend at the time, and say it in front of her mother, I believe I'm in love with you. <laughs> there's doubt in that, right? So there's another stage. I know. I know we're going to make it. I know we're going to succeed. I know we're going to have success. I know. And a lot of people stop there. When they reach it, they stop there. But there's another level of that. And if I use that same analogy, I, be, I know I'm in love with you. There's doubt. And it's not fear that steals dreams. It's doubt. See, fear, it comes in and it kicks your door open and says, man, you shouldn't do this. Doubt comes in the side door. Doubt's reasonable. Doubt says, man, you know, you're not spending enough time with your kids. Man, you know, getting a full-time job is not that bad. Man, doubt's like, you don't really have to go that hard. We already have this. See, doubt's reasonable. And so that's the real stiller of dreams. But the biggest level of faith is I am. I am. It's already done. It's already declared. I am. I am successful. I am a multimillionaire. I am a billionaire. It's already done. It's already made in my mind. That's the level of faith that you have to declare is I am. Running out of time here. Exhaust yourself daily. Do, do I have some extra time? Man, I'm running out of time. All right. Exhaust yourself daily. Faith without work is dead. Now, once you have that faith, you have to, there, once you become an entrepreneur, you don't have a boss that's looking over your shoulder. So you have to challenge yourself if you're working the hardest. So I would, I would literally say to myself every single day, is there anybody in the world outworking me right now? In the world. And if I could say yes, I didn't deserve the opportunity. So at the end of the day, if you're still going home with energy, you didn't work hard enough. Straight up, you didn't work hard enough. And I'm not talking about the emails and all the little stuff in the weeds. I'm talking about the hard projects, like doing a deal with Top Ramen projects, like doing a deal with Betty Crocker projects, right? The things that exhaust you. It might be one or two things, but you're exhausted. You can't even talk. That's the type of exhaustion that you need at the end of the day. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to, ah, man, I got a lot of stuff. Do I have grace? My man on the uh, AV, do I have grace? You guys want me to continue? Yes. You guys want me to continue? All right, so they want me to continue. It's lunch after, my, after, after mine, right? 
All right, no one's giving me, so I'm just going to go. All right, here we go. All right, okay, focus on your blessings. Now, this is very important. Some people, everybody counts. Everybody counts. And your emotions are a reflection of what you're counting. So you can tell the person that's down, they're out, they're, they're, they're stressed. What they count is their problems. That's what they see. The ones that, no matter what's going on in their life, they have the enthusiasm, they have the energy, they're counting their blessings. So every single day, you got to count. So count the things that are going right in your life. You know, one of the things I used to say to my wife, like we used to get in arguments, because she's always happy. And I was like, yeah, it's real, being ha it's real easy being happy as a stay-at-home mom. Oh, right? <laughs> but what I realized is that there's a lot of unhappy stay-at-home moms. So happiness is a choice. So focus on your blessings, not your, not your problems. Three birds. I was having uh, lunch and, uh, at Chipotle, and uh, we had some leftover chips. And uh, there was three birds sitting right there. This is a true story. Three birds that were sitting right there. Uh, and so I broke off the chips, and I threw them in the bird's direction. And one bird flew, scared of his life, flew away. Another bird went straight after the chips, and he's just munching them down. And there's one other bird that took a couple of hops, and then he stopped, and he just watched the bird eat. So I'm not going to even talk about the bird that just flew away. That's just someone that's fear. That's someone that wouldn't even do a startup grind. Most people think that person that just flew away, they, they don't got the curse to even be in this room. So I'm not going to talk about them. But most people would think they're the worst of all. But it's not them. It's the bird that hopped. See, that bird, they kind of want it. They kind of want to be successful. They have the talent. They even have more talent than the person that just goes gets it. But they kind of want it. They want it, but they don't, they're not willing to do what it takes. They're not willing to sacrifice. So they watch everybody else eat. They continue to just absorb information in all the newspapers and, and read about other people's success. And they want it, but they're not willing to go get it. But that first, that one bird is fearless. It goes after it with everything, with reckless abandon. It realizes, I'm hungry, I want success, and I'm going to go get it. See, those chips are opportunity. Opportunity are presented to all of us. But you got to decide which one of those three birds are you. Next slide, cost of inaction. Oh, perfect, you put more time for me. Cost of inaction. This is very important for this room. So many times, there's something in our spirit, there's something in our soul saying that we should do something. And sometimes it's bigger than us. Right? And sometimes they're even small, but they're ideas. And so you feel that it's, there's no cost for you not executing that idea. But what I realize as you look in hindsight, there is a major cost for inaction. There is a major cost that you pay for not taking action on that idea that you have. There's a major cost. And the way I looked at this major cost, I said, what if I would have listened? There were so many times I didn't have to talk about, what if I would have stopped? What if I didn't create the first pro uh, product? This would probably be the, 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 this year will be the one that's the least successful. What if I, what if I didn't do it? And I look back at my life, that would have that would, cost me. It would have cost me, not, I, not, I have college paid for my kids. I have being able to build a dream home for my wife, being able to uh, bless my church, being able to bless people with education and going through this adversity that I found. There's so many different things. He gave me the note, so I'm, you guys got to, I got to cut. Last one. Be moved by what, not what you see. This right here, this is my Shark Tank rejection notice. 
I got three of these. And so when you look at this, if, you, if, if you're moved by what you see, you'll stop. But I continued. Found the producer on LinkedIn, and I said, listen, I got to be on the show. And not only did we get on the show, but we were wrote, uh, voted by US News the number one product out of Shark Tank that works and saves money. Next, the million dollar PO. Oh, do I have time? No, yes, no, no? OK, I'm going to skip this. Sorry, guys. But anyways, million dollar PO. I'm going to do it anyway. Who's going to get up here and stop me? Who, hey, who's bad enough out there? I don't see nobody bad enough out there. Who's going to stop me? Million dollar PO. I'm going to talk about the million dollar PO. And I'm going to work on my time. I learned from this. I'm going to work on it. <laughs> At this time, we were getting POs from all these grocery stores, Safeway, Walmart, Target. And they were like 30,000, 40,000. One of my staff come in my office and say, did you see the email? And I said, no, I didn't see it. They said, there's a, there's, and she, she printed it. No, she didn't print it. She said, look, and I looked at it. It was a PO for $947,000 from Walmart. Okay, that's a game changer, right? And so I, we're freaking out. I bring all my staff in. I said, we got to know if they want case packs or displays. So we call them on speaker, and we say, hey, uh, Oh, man, thank you so much. We got the order. Uh, did you want case packs or displays for these, for these orders? And he said, Chris, what PO? I gave him the PO number. And he goes, oh, no. And all my staff's in the room. And, and, I, and, and he goes, I said, what, what, what's, what's going on? He said, Chris, that's a mistake. And I'm like, OK, maybe it's 500,000. You know, you know. He's like, no, the whole PO is a mistake. There's no PO. And he goes, and I go, uh, he's like, but thank you, Chris. You saved my job. And I said, oh, OK, no, no problem. We hang up, and all my staffs are just quiet. They're looking at me. And I said, go print out the PO. And they're like, what? She goes, prints it out. I grab it, and I put it in my wall. And I said, I'm believing that we're going to have a PO even higher than this. They're just staring. And I said, I believe it. We're going to have, we're now, we, now we see how to be, be ready for a big, a big PO. Now we're going to be ready for it. 11 months later, the VP of Walmart calls me and says, listen, we want you guys to be the feature of our back to school. We want to put rapid ramen and rapid mac cookers in every single Walmart in the country. It wasn't a million dollar order. It was a $3.2 million order. So I'm going to finish at this. I'm going to finish at this. Because, oh, he went and got back up. Oh, you put out, oh! <laughs> Last one, limitless possibilities. <laughs> All right, come here, come here, man, come here. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> All right, last slide, last slide. <laughs> he bad now. Hey, all right, it's good, okay. Last slide. Limitless possibilities. You know, it started with this. This was my drawing, OK? It started with this. My dad asking me, I mean, my, my daughter asking me, hey, dad, what you drawing? And I'm drawing this on the kitchen island. And I'm telling her it's the noodle cooker. That, come to find out, you can't uh, trademark that. So she's like, and I'm telling her about it. And it went from that to them grabbing it off the store shelves. So imagine what they think is possible that you can draw something, and then you can have it on store shelves all over the country. And I want to finish there, that any idea that you have, go out and get it. Go out and make it happen. Be bold. Being realistic for cowards, OK? Being, if, if, if all, this, all this happened in two and a half years, would not be realistic. So don't be realistic. Go out and get it. Make it happen. That's my time. Thank you, guys.